thanks for watching this video. Please make sure you're safe. Take the proper precautions. And always make sure when you work on these things that there's no power going to them. You know, just think ahead. Take your time. Don't get in a hurry. You can do this and you can be safe while doing it. So again, you know, do everything you can to be safe. Thank you. So hey, how's it going, Kino Nation, YouTube Nation, all the people that are out there, slot techs, whatever. I'm going to show you, this is Wayno um, from W&J Forever Kino Casino. Um, we're more than Kino. We've got slots. We, got, we do all that stuff, you know. So I want to show you guys this too. Um, I work on these things a lot, and um, the own, my own home machine, um, uh, the monitor, the CRT, I took a dump. And I can replace it with a flat screen LCD. Uh, they make them, Seronex does, thank God they do. If I wanted to and convert it, it would look nicer. But I like the um, nostalgia, I like the old uh, CRT. So the touch screen on here is good too, um, it works good. So what I wanna do is um, I wanna go ahead and fix this monitor and I wanna show you guys um, how to do that whole process. So again, it's the intro to this. Um, I'm just gonna show you that it doesn't work. Um, some colors may come on, but that's about it. Um, I believe it's the capacitors that have taken a crap. Um, um, you know, the thing's old. It's 1990s, so we're getting there. Um, shit, I graduated high school in the 90s. But this is an old money storm. Now, what's cool about these machines right here is you can actually switch out the glass, switch out um, a few things, and the casinos are really smart. And then you could have different games. You could have, they, they made so many different games. Um, that would go uh, into this cabinet uh, and into the computer uh, tray of it. So you could, I mean, there's there's hundreds of them. Um, so anyways, I'm going to show you that this doesn't work. When I do this, I'll probably turn on the one next to it because I put them on the surge protector. Let's see what's up. But yeah, this one didn't come on, so I'm going to go inside lights on. I'm going to go ahead and uh, power it on. This is a project I've been meaning to do for a while. I just haven't got to it. So I want to uh, get to it. The other thing that could be wrong with this, so you, you'll see it's on. I heard it go, tsh, but it didn't go on, right? Um, I believe the picture tube is totally fine in this. Um, I believe the only thing, again, that's bad in this monitor is the capacitor. Sometimes the flybacks uh, go bad, and I'll show you that. That's the dangerous part about this is um, disconnecting the flyback um, but I'll show you how to do it safely again um, I take no responsibility for you screwing up your s um, if you do it that's on you um, and I take no responsibility if you don't take proper safety uh, precautions and you hurt yourself um, this will sit probably for about at least a week before I even touch it um, but you won't know that because I'm gonna edit it all together but um, when you unplug this monitor and take it out um, it should uh, discharge itself um, and so I would give it some time um, but you know that just in case it doesn't um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'll actually um, right now it's loading uh, even though the screen's not working the game is loading so it'll probably go through a couple things um, it may not because it has been kind of off the power bar I haven't been running um, any power to it so the CMOS and all that stuff where it keeps the, the, the memory and everything may be need to be reset and I can't see to do it right so um, another reason to get this thing going oh no there it goes it's cycling through and it probably should work because the battery I just replaced it in the motherboard itself but there you go so again we're gonna start this deal and I hope it helps you that's the main things I just want to help you I want to show you you can fix this cheap with a little knowledge and uh, know-how and uh, like I said, I'm going to replace the capacitors. I'll even show you what those are and uh, the whole process of this. So, um, the idea is to do it without uh, costing a lot of bucks. So, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and turn this thing off. All right. So, what I'm doing here is I'm actually making the tool that's going to, um, you know, basically take the uh, flyback. And I can get in there and ground it uh, really easily. Uh, sorry if you heard the ESPN go off. Anywho, um, 
so yeah, going to solder that wire. And it's basically it's the concept of, you'll see when you go into the flyback underneath and touch the metal, you want to discharge everything. It's going to come up the metal there and go down here and ground down. You're gonna, I'm going to put this wire to the chassis. So right now I'm soldering this and then I'll use some electrical tape and go around to make sure it stays in place. You don't want it to touch the plastic, it just needs to touch the metal. There's other videos on YouTube about this. Uh, a lot of people who do uh, arcade monitor repair, um, they will show you how to do this um, if they have like those little arcade machines. So, uh, Anywho, uh, this is the next step. I'll show you the finished product and then we'll uh, get on with the project. All right, so got my little tool done. Um, I wrap it. I know it's a plastic end, but I wrap it with electrical tape just because to be safe. I'm also going to remove my wedding ring when I go to do this because I don't want to hurt myself. Now, again, disclaimer, this shit will kill you. So if you don't know what you're doing and you don't feel comfortable, um, then don't do it. But um, you can do it safely. Uh, key is make sure there's no power running um to your monitor right and what's different from this one is the flyback which is this deal on point with the screwdriver it actually goes underneath so you have to get underneath but the other end um, of this tool if i can get it up here i don't know if i can do it without my tripod um right now i'm doing this kind of freehand um i will have a tripod later so tripod 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 so see this end I'm actually going to bolt that down to the chassis over here um, to ground it. So I'm also, I like to go the extra mile, put on my grounding strap, all that stuff. So we'll get to this um, because that's kind of like the first, one of the first deals you do is you disconnect that flyback. You got to get in there. It's hard to see, but I'm going to go ahead and try to remove that. And the basic thing I'm trying to do is get to this board right here because the the cap capacitor is here down in here. That's what I believe the problem is. So once I replace the capacitors um, and put it all back, solder them back, and put everything back, then I'll know, right? I'll know if it's the flyback that needs to be replaced, maybe the tube shot. All I know is there's a lot of voltage in here. So you need, to, well, not now. This thing's been sitting for god months i was originally gonna do a week uh, have you seen the first part um but life gets in the way so again um we're gonna attempt this together because why i want you guys to see the possibility of fixing your own crap and nine of the ten times it's just these things here these caps that we're gonna i'll show you that uh bubbled up and are bad they just go out over time and it's you can get a cap kit again i went to this uh i'm not I'm gonna respond, but i went to mouse or electronics online and and ordered the caps i needed and i'll show you all that stuff but so here we go that's um that's that um i'll show you it all hooked up next and i'll have this probably on a good tripod uh so you guys can see the disassemble uh or, or actually me Try not to blow myself up. Also, I suggest you wear shoes with uh, rubber soles. Again, just be careful. Common sense. Um, just ground yourself. You're going to see when I do it, and I'm going to explain more. I'll use one hand. I'll have one hand in my pocket. Again, no jewelry on. And I'm going to be just very careful with uh, how it goes. So I'll have it on a tripod that way. Um, you guys, uh, I won't. I just want my hands free to be able to do what I gotta do. So, all right, there we go. All right, guys. So, um, I hooked this in. There's like a little bolt here. I actually put it all in here. Um, so the best way to get to this flyback is right there. Okay. So, I'm gonna go ahead and take off my ring. Be smart about it. I don't have any metal on me nothing like that and so again I'm gonna go ahead and and do this very carefully one hand in my pocket try not to touch anything else because you'll damage other s you get in here 
and you're basically just going to get in against this with the screwdriver and you might hear some uh some, some shit here so let's see oh i gotta get over this this hump right Uh, I'm actually going to switch hands, put this other hand in my pocket, so I can see better, and we're just going to go for it, and uh, again, be careful, and you might hear a little tss, like when you're in here, it's normal, getting out all the rest of the, I kind of heard it there. Maybe. Okay. So again, if I uh, die on this, tell my wife I love her. Huh? Oh, mama cat. Got a cat. Stop. Took care of you already. Let's see. I don't hear any discharge. So I'm thinking it's good because bottom line is um, I had this thing disconnected for a long time. Go ahead and take this cable off. Out of the way. I can get it out of here. So it helps too. Just want to make sure. So again, you want to make sure. Take your time, people. No hurry, right? Yeah, no hurry. No hurry. All this stuff may be coming out of the way. So it doesn't. Just again, you just want to double check and make sure you're grounded. Make sure all is groovy. Uh, go back in and always make sure my deal is still good here. Looks to be. I use heavy gauge wire to uh, that way. That's always good. All right. There we go. Gotta be better at it than I am because I have a hard time sometimes. Everything seems good. If it goes boom, you'll know. Believe me. I feel like we're good. You can go all around in there and just keep like moving to make sure. Yeah, that's when I get to this, what I need to get to, right? And it appears, I don't know. That, yeah, I feel like I'm good. Just gonna get it all out of there. Hard to break loose. Really, right here. Sometimes they're so tough that, uh, in actuality, you have to just basically uh, have it exposed really good so you can pull it out with your hands. So, I'm actually going to pause the video. I'm probably going to try get in a position and remove some of this out of the way to get it in a better position for you guys. Because I just want to be able to, I was hoping I could just pop it out of there from the bottom. But I think the wire that goes into the fly uh, flyback prevents that. So, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll give it a shot a uh, different way. Alright guys, so bear with me. I'm going to try this. Uh, doing it... Uh, Right from the deal. So I don't want to take this backer off yet. Because this just kind of unplugs. But I don't want to do that because. I don't know for sure. I believe I got a discharge. But I don't know 100% for sure. So I think the next thing. Make sure you take pictures of all this. If you don't know where the wires go. Um, so 
So just take pictures, know all that um, prior. You're gonna want to. I'm gonna go ahead and get my fake strap, the mouth off, get this monitor maybe exposed um, to where I can flip it kind of on its face. And that will allow me to do some cool stuff. So. Eight millimeter. Nine millimeter. Speak to the find an eight. That would be wonderful. Wonderful. We gotta find an eight. And wouldn't you not? Know, probably the only one that I'm missing is an eight. Oh, here it is. Hey, how's it going? Probably use a half inch or something. You can probably do this by hand. That's a lot of these. Oh, look at look at this. Tell me it's never been taken out by the casino. Fine. I'll put on that. I'll get the the drive on it. Mm -hmm. Aha! Here we go. Let's do it the easy way, huh? I'll probably edit some of this out, put it right for you guys, so you don't have to listen to all of it and. I'll fast forward while I'm doing this part. This will probably take me a long time to edit, I'm sure. I like to go a little bit by little because that way you're not putting all the tension. Look at how easy that one is. Holy crap. That ain't good. It sits right in your your, your dilly bob and funny. But you guys will see that I I'm doing this for you here. Not faking the funk. Get this screw. Always know where you're putting your stuff. So you're not lose it. Now I wouldn't mind just going um, actually at kind of an angle. Be very careful. That angle thing. You get this one. So boom, 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 boom. Right? Like uh I guess it's very similar if you ever worked on cars to uh, doing your lug nuts. Put them back on. Uh, try not to do it just to, you know, left to right or something, or right to left. You want to, like, diagonalize it. This one's so loose, I probably just do it all by hand. It's crazy to me that this was that loose um, at the casino. So, maybe it wasn't. I, I, I imagine this was repaired after it came out or something. I, I'm probably not the first guy to work on this monitor. Typically, oh, look at that. Typically, they uh, have to have some stuff redone. I mean, this is so easy to come out that I'm almost positively, surely, surely sure that it's. Uh, and look at it, it's already slipping them on. It's been worked on before. So just be careful. These are heavy ass objects. So right now I got this third bottom one out. I'm gonna go. I only have one more up on top, and I'm gonna take this one out. And you don't want to ruin your screen anyways, right? You have a touch screen here on the outside, um, which is very important if you're uh, changing games on your uh, machine. You know, most, some slots you really don't need to touch. Um, but this is an eye interactive machine I have right now, which meaning it uses the touch. And I, and I want to also be able to put different games in. Um, so that would require the touch. Let's see, uh, this should come right off, yeah. And then, basically this, I'm hoping, I can just kind of, I got enough wires here, on the fly back, to where I should be able to, just push a little bit forward and get to that bottom, right? Now be careful, because there's other stuff connected, and you just gotta look and see. So I'll actually... I'm going to pause it and show you what I'm going to disconnect on this side. Actually, I probably can do it. Yeah, I'm going to do that because I want you to see what I'm disconnecting here to get more leverage to actually pull this forward, right? Um, and I want to show you what I'm going to disconnect back here as well. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to pause this. All right, so I'm back. I think what was important to me was to show you that to get this to kind of go See how it's pulling 
all this, but it's like tight right here. There's like a, it's like a, a ribbon in here. Maybe you can see it this way. See, and it's um, a black one down there, and it's it's um, in a bad spot. But I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this bad boy up here if I can. Bye bye, bad boy. I'll stay there, and I'll probably end up having to uh, clip off this little um, zip tie. So right in here, I'm actually going to go over and just uh, look and see. Be careful. What's cool, too, see, if you didn't have... I'm really trying to wiggle this thing. I'm gonna wiggle. Uh, may have to. Um, man, I don't know if it's uh, just one of those deals where I can't get to it. It's in here. I really need two hands. Um, so that's in there, and I'm gonna try to get it. So I'm gonna pause it, and we'll come back. So yeah, I have I'm gonna I got it out. Uh right, I got the plug undone. But now I need to snip this little bad boy here so I can get some more leverage on there. Be careful not to mess your wires up. Get in here and mess up some real crap. But I'm trying to do this one handed, which is not the probably the most I just want to share with you guys, right? Like, show you the whole experience. All right, I got it. I'm messing stuff up. Ah, see how this all comes loose. So I just have to remember that all of this gets tied back up together. So there's a power that I want to just make sure we're we're putting it all back right. Gonna be very gentle there. Again, be careful of this because if there is some electricity in there, some. You're going to get a little, hey, how's it going? You don't want that. So I think, let's keep looking. I think we might have it. Let's see if we can tilt it now. Oh, yeah. That'll definitely get us to that flyback down in there, which is where, again, I don't know if you guys can see it down there. See it? Now you can see it. The little red, and then there's the black rubber. That's what we're going to, to pull out. And you can see why I probably didn't, because... I was able to get it because it was, again, against the bottom, and that's just all bad. So, I'm looking at this, and I'm just trying to see, well, can I actually keep pulling over? What can I do here? Um, and there's some more zip ties here to the back tray. So, I'm actually going to leave it. I'm just going to tilt it up in place when I go to um, remove this. So, I'm going to put it in a different angle. So you guys can see me again, take out the fly back. And um, then we'll go from there. We just, again, we're, our main thing is to get this tray out where those capacitors are. Because those are what needs to be redone. Uh, I just know it is. They're bad. They look bubbled. In fact, a couple right there. All right. So we'll give it a shot. All right, guys. All right. So we're in a better position here. I'm going to take my wedding ring off just for the time being. So again... Don't electrocute myself just in case. And make sure I'm grounded good. You know, my mom, she grounded me. Um, and I'm basically, again, going to push this forward now. And I have more exposed this time. I can see everything. And I'll be able to get this out a little bit easier. All right. So now you can definitely see. I'll make sure again. I have it. So I got that out of there. Came out of that dilly bob. Um, and now I have to uh, get this board out right here. Um, there's the Ceronics model, 1793. But uh, pretty cool. Again, I'm just excited now. I'll clean all that up too. You see all the dirt that came out and the smoke and nastiness. Um, so maybe this hasn't been uh, fixed. Uh, which, okay, cool. But, uh, yeah, I want to use the retro, right? So we'll get in here, we'll mess with these capacitors and look, and I'll give you a better view when I get this uh, board out. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
we'll see here. Maybe I can do something really cool. So I got it locked on target, so I gotta not do that. Let's take it off. It's locked. Let's move it back to normal. Uh, still trying to figure out how to use my gimbal. But uh, pretty badass. I admit these gimbals are the way to go. At this point, I could totally disconnect my cool uh, Billy Bob here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unscrew it. So it's cool. It was just an existing ground that you already need for the board. So I thought that was kind of groovy. Like an old time movie. So there. Then it was just one of these like little dillies. Worked out nice. So don't lose your stuff. Always put it back. I'm actually going to keep the ground off at this point. Um, and then, so here's the key now. I got to pull it all back. So I don't disconnect it. Don't dischanced. I pull it back without the. Uh, Hurting anything here. Alright, see if I can get it exposed for you guys a little more. So we got our monitor loose out of its frame. Um again, I'll fly back. Excuse me. Some belches going on. Um now at this point I can go ahead and remove this back panel. Quarter inch to quarter. Yeah, quarter inch, people. Quarter inch. All right. So, quarter inch. We got Seamus the pug. He's looking on over here. Poor guy. Yeah, he, uh, he loves us. We love him too. He yeah, uh, we found out from the vet this week some pretty bad news. Poor guy. Uh, it's been a wreck. Than uh, just a wreck, but um, I gotta stay busy. I sit there and think too much about it. I'm gonna get even more upset. JoJo's with the kids. Um, you're watching. Well, I'm doing this on Halloween, um, and I'm doing that because um, she went about 45 miles away to. Uh, Take the kids trick or treating with her best friend, her maid of honor. We just got married in May of this last year. Or this year? Look at this. Look how easy that is. So yeah, I was right on that. Just this is two deals. And again, that's really nice when you see it. Now you're gonna see there's a lot of other stuff that probably needs to be disconnected here. But I was able to get it exposed a little bit more, which makes me happy. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and actually now pull off this bad boy. Uh, is that okay with some? Just don't want to be able to wiggle. There it is. Wiggles. The wiggles. Got it. Okay. So yeah, you can see, there it is. There's your pins and you'll want to reconnect it that way. So that's important. Now from here, I have another ground and I'm just going to pull it off. That's cool. Um, and then again, this is our, whoa, see, there goes the whole monitor. See, holding it by its freaking deal. Woo, got lucky. I don't want to be pulling wires out of the board down there. That'd be not cool. So yeah, this is a heavy sucker. So you want to make sure you're just being very careful. Like I almost wasn't there. So I have both of these boards. This is a, another board. I'll review this. Make sure there's no chips blown. Looks really good. Uh, this is a video board. And it is good. And uh, at least from the tell of it. So that's the good news. Again, I believe this tube is fine. Um, and again, 9 out of 10 times, it's this wonderful, uh, the capacitor's on this so I let this dangle get out of our way and we still have a few wires in the waist um, have a ground here that goes back to the J plug have to get rid of um, or take off like get rid of I don't get rid of it rid of. and we're still pulling this out now I have here 
a uh, the, the gazing again they tell you high voltage keep your ass safe um, so mm, I'm, I'm good I'll go ahead and pull this off and it'll be good so there you go there's the degaza hey degaza degaza and then again i'm getting more exposed this is a power supply to this go ahead and pull it out believe it or not this is uh going pretty smooth even though you got a long ass video but i'm going to um basically short nut so right here i got one last nut I gotta take off. Cause I'm a nut. I'm a nut. I'm a so nut. yeah, take this ground off and have this loose. And then we'll go over to the workstation where the solder is. And we will look at capacitors. Oh yeah. What a cool project. Okay, there we go. Boom. That's off. Oh, there's the ground. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have us a board to work on and bye bye okay so i'm gonna stop the vid get reset and we'll go from there all right all right so here we go i'm gonna try to kind of zoom in a little bit here i'm on the gimbal so bear with me and learn how to use it as we go and those are the capacitors I was telling you about that appear to need fixing. This one, this one there, bubbled. Now, the key with these capacitors is that you match them up and you get the same kind. So, these are the 250 volts, 220 UFs. And it's important that you match up the 220 UF part. Uh, and I believe the voltage can be a little bit higher. Uh, or I think a little bit lower. But the, the UF numbers have to match um, to be able to, you know, make all this go groovy. You don't want to put the wrong stuff in. So I'm actually, for the first time, going to check out the three. And we're going to replace all these three. These are, again, 250 volts. Um, let's see if I can get it in there. I don't know if you guys can see it. 250 volts, 220, right. And that's what's on this one here. And these are by... Um, Nichicon. Cool. Nice Nichicon. And uh, these other ones here... I'll probably go ahead and replace them too since I got them. Um, I'm going to look at these through the ideal, see what I got. Yeah, there's definitely bulge and, and the magnifier. And uh, that's important. And this magnifier is important because when I go to SADA, I am going to want to make sure that I see what I'm doing. And what's cool about these is on the back, they give you a schematic. I don't know if you guys... Here, there you go. They give you a schematic of where those are on the other side. So you know exactly what to desolder. And then, uh, see the circles? And then you even have uh, the smaller ones, all that kind of stuff. So it makes life really easy um, when you're doing this. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the solderer going. And we're going to get this project on the road. Because we've already been down the road. But I want to get it done because I want to get Money Storm. I want to get that machine up. And I can get this table cleared off a little bit more. And get on to, what do they say, bigger and better things. I have a whole nother slot machine over here i got to start working on. And uh, we want to get to that. So, yeah. Okay, guys, so I think you guys can see they're all gone. I got them all removed. And um, this is one I think is the culprit. It's the bulged one. But uh, just so you guys know, um, I prefer to use my soldering iron at around 400 degrees 
to get hot enough to melt uh, the solder back and get it out on the wick. Um, and I'll show you some of these where you get the, the solder, how this wick just, I don't know you guys can see it, it just picks it up. Like, you can see the, the little metal probably, here. I'll put it back in here. But, again, not a hard process at all. Um, the flux is the key. Um, and all should go well. Um, so got those out. I'm going to replace them and put the new ones in and solder them in. I'll show you how to do that in a special way. There's a negative and a positive side on these capacitors and obvious negative rest of the positive side. So when you're connecting it, you want to be sure. And what I love again about this board is, um, if you were to kind of see there's a positive down over here and a negative side. So when I'm putting them through, I'll know. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the gist of it. So I got these old, these three old ones out. Again, I think it's this bad boy here that's kind of poofed. Um, I can feel it. You can feel them with your thumbs. Um, so I'll replace those. Resolder. Uh, go from there. Um, sorry about the focus. Again, I'm not a professional video guy, but I'm just trying to get this to you. I'll hopefully edit all this good to you guys and you can see what's up. So this is the process. Again, do this before you do anything other major. This is the cheapest fix. So the negative again goes on to the negative side. And the positive goes to the positive side. You can flip this over and kind of look at what we got. And I like to go ahead and come through like that. And we will get it going. So, what I like to do is just kind of bend these posts a little bit in the direction, in the direction just to keep them in place, right? Because um, that's important. And then we can clip them at the end. So, we're going to get them kind of going in the direction we want. And again, the snap-on would probably be a better deal, but, you know, I, I don't really care. Uh, I don't, I think the snap-ons are just a little bit more money, and, you know, Wayne, I'll, I'll have to keep, uh, the budget down. Oh, yeah. So we'll go play Kino. Speaking of that, there's the Kino, uh, clan. They just went ahead and are messaging about Halloween. That's cool. Uh, nice bunch of dudes, people. Um, JoJo and I are blessed to have them in our lives. So, uh, thank you to those people. Or putting up with us. Or putting up with me, basically. Oh, let's put up with JoJo. So what I like to do is what I'm going to do is bring heat to this area here on this side. And we're just going to let it flow, flow, flow. So we'll fill all this in. We'll get it back in business. We'll be back in business. Hoping to be able to test it out tonight. For that'd be cool before Jojo and the kids got home, so they can, so she can see. All right, so that should be pretty good. Um, on that one. Um, now what I'll do is I'll clip it. Um, I'm gonna clean off my solder. You know, always kind of ding it, ding it, ding it. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Make sure you don't drop the solder back down on the thing. I think I just almost did. Careful about that. Don't want to cross. Uh, do anything. So what I did to do. Again, I'm picky. I told Jojo I need Q-tips. Yeah, I'll get some. Yeah, I'll get it myself. Take this. I have to clean my deal. See where I'm at. All right. And then what I'm going to do is also fold this over. And make sure I got. I'm not grounded anywhere else. Everything's groovy. And I'm back where I should be. And I am. So all solid, all good. All happy. This I don't want the first one could have been better. Second one's good. Oh well. Again, just do the best you can and call it good. Then I'll bend these back up out of the way. And we will do a clippy clippy clippy. And uh the end. Alright, so uh looks like I got it. Uh these three on um probably not the best soldering work it's over here in this area 
Sorry, Jolene's messaging me. But, uh, so, not bad, though. Uh, problem is, I was going to replace a couple of these other ones. This is a Samsung. I was going to replace this, but it appears I don't have one of the same voltage, and you need to ma match it up. It's a 22100, so I may order that if this fix doesn't work for now. But all the other ones look good, and I didn't want to replace these yet because... They look like they have been replaced, so I don't think these are the originals, and I have them if I need to, but they look pretty new. So I think someone did get in here before. I just think that these these are my problem. These are, uh, we'll find out. It could be the flyback, but I'm hoping not. So we're going to put all this back together, and we will see if it works, um, and I'll show you that whole process of putting it back together. All right, guys. Thanks. All right, so here we go. We're going to put this back together. Um, I'm just going to do it from this angle. Um, and I already kind of got the tray back aligned. I just need to put um, the bolts back in to line it up good. And then I'll just start plugging everything back, putting everything back, and we'll go from there now. Um, Again, I didn't replace everything um, that I could have replaced. And what's going to happen is, is if we go to, um, you know, basically reinstall this and we find out that, hey, you know, uh, it didn't work. So we'll have to, you know, think of plan B, which will be order more capacitors. Uh, and then maybe even consider getting a flyback. But I think what I would do would just be uh, replace all the capacitors and then go from there. I just really feel like just by my experience with capacitors and electronics and all this crap that the ones that I just replaced, those three, uh, one of them or two of them or all of them were the problem. And I could have set a, um, there's a way to test and actually check um, the resistance on them, but I didn't do that. All right, so we'll see. I just set it here, I haven't slid it in, so we'll slide it all the way in. Should be good. Kind of nervous, I just don't know. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, it is what it is. See? Ain't looking too good. I heard a shh back there just now. Oh, it is looking very good. Look at this. Look at this, guys. It's coming back alive. Doing a screen test. So let's get it all. Still may not be right. We're going to try to see that with some capacitor. I wasn't getting screen before, so we'll turn up the gain a little. Basically, I replaced all of the, um, I don't know if you guys saw it before, but all the capacitors here, I basically soldered in. All these capacitors are brand new, these, these big old deals here. And I even did them on that little picture board. And you'll see right there, that's what they call flyback, that deal with the red wire and that plug. That's a new flyback. So that part was about 45 bucks. And I'm thinking that this one on the board is bad. And I won't know again until I put that new one in. Um, after I replace this, I'm really kind of at a loss if this doesn't fix it. I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, we'll fix it. But you can see, I'm going to kind of get closer. Hope you guys, sorry about my bad video quality. Um, but this is these pens right here is all the ones that I have to desolder. So I still have these two left, and I've already desoldered a bunch of these other ones. So I'll go ahead and get all these, again, clean them up, get them really good, desoldered. And then I gotta pull that flyback off. And then when I do, I gotta put the other one in and start soldering it back on this board. And then I gotta reconnect all of it back over here to that bad boy. And then I'll go. All right, we're back. We got the fly back in, the new one. I uh, got it even soldered to that board. Going to have to put this uh, 
right here this plastic cup back up underneath the monitor here up in there um, so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna bolt everything down plug everything in and we'll give it a shot a little worried so here we go we're gonna get this monitor in here and see what we did if we got it working right this thing is not light I'll tell you that see if we can get it in here right All right, everybody, wish us luck. If it goes bang, I'm running. Sun Coast. Uh oh, it's not good. I don't have, I don't have a picture. Uh oh. Well, that sucks. All right, I'm gonna turn it off. All right, guys, I finally got it. Um, if you've been watching this video, um, you see that I've really been struggling with getting this monitor back on. Um, I got it. Um, it's not the clearest in the world. Um, we are talking about a over 20 year old monitor, but I do believe I got it pretty darn close. Um, a few things about this, um, monitor is... I'm going to show you. I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to pull this out because I need to tighten up a few things. That I've been testing it out since I, I kind of got it back to normal. But I've been working on this monitor after I got the flyback on. I've been working on this monitor for like almost a day and a half of adjusting and uh, the flyback itself. Um, so... If you remember, I went to put this on because I always show you how it goes and it didn't work. Well, I was really upset. So the next morning I pulled it all back out, looked at my solder joints. Everything looked good. Just in case, though, I went ahead and redid a couple other solder spots. And then I put it back in and I still had the same issue. So I thought to myself, well, there's adjustments on the flyback. So let me mess with it. So I, I messed with the, there's three of them. A focus one, a number two. And then there's the screen uh, control. So I turned them. And I'm going to show you what those look like in a minute. And when I turned the screen, it actually gave me a picture. Um, the colors were all off. And I'll explain why that was. And um, basically everything was just out of focus. And so that's where we began a day and a half of configuring. So I'm going to show you guys what's up. Alright guys, I'm back. So I apologize for the light quality if it's not the greatest. Uh, doing this in my living room because that's where the slot machines are. And then the two lights I have overhead, the remote for the lights isn't working, which is typical <sighs> when I need it. So here's that tray. So here's the flyback. I, I soldered back in. But I'm going to go ahead. Whoa, don't want to do that. Almost lost the whole damn thing. I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> pull this tray out. I haven't bolted it in because, again, it's key to have out loose so you can make adjustments, which um, I'm telling you, I probably put this monitor in and out of the machine. You can ask Jolene, like, I don't know, uh, probably a hundred and... She said 178 times because she knows 78 is my favorite uh, number, but it was a lot of times, I'm telling you, um, and it was a workout, and I went to bed last night going, man, I don't know if I'm ever going to get this, but I did, and so down in here, I don't know if you can see it, there's three knobs, so the, there's two up here. That's focus one, focus two, and down here in this hole is another one, and that's screen. Well, again, when I started adjusting these knobs, I mean, when you do something to one or whatever, it, it kind of messes with everything. And so you have to keep playing with these knobs until you just get it right. And I'm telling you, it is it sounds easier than it is. Um, in the... In the field, or if they were working on a monitor, what they would do is they would actually, like when it comes to this, they'd run a test cable out of the uh, plug-in up there where it plugs in up on top. I think you guys can see it up there where the monitor slides in, that little J-plug. That would have a cable. You come out and bring it all the way out here. 
you turn on your slot and then you could your monitor would come on of course because it'd be you'd bring the cable and you connect it into this back deal here the back porch or back port back porch back port and then what that would do is allow you to you could adjust it on the fly well i would you know i don't have that so i had to do it the hard way but i got it um and so basically this whole fix was relatively cheap as you already know i replaced all those caps that was 40 bucks but it saved me like hundreds because i didn't have to put an lcd in or i have that ready to go but i, I just wanted to keep the integrity of this machine so you know i hope this helps you guys um again the one thing to say is don't be afraid um mess with you know do it yourself um there's a lot of um, videos out there to kind of help you. This is similar to like an arcade gaming monitor. So it helps you. You can watch some videos on that on how they work on things. Now, the other thing is the purity. So the colors I mentioned were off. So what I had to do is these rings I also were off. And if you notice, if you kind of look in there, kind of there's like a yellow striped on those rings. Well, you want that to line up. And luckily the, the slot... Um, tech before who set this all up actually put a high resistant epoxy there with color on there so you could tell where it was supposed to line up so um in a perfect world i'll get some um high heat epoxy and epoxy those rings in place so they don't move because if they move the purity rings are up here the um these are the two purities and then these are your different colors i think the top one is uh i want to say it's like red blue there's like uh, green brown and then it's like I don't even know like I, magenta or something else I, I have no idea my, my point is is you have to play with those until you get the colors right because if not the colors are going to look really out of whack also if you're like horizontal and all that stuff this all comes loose too but luckily see this was all glued into place so I didn't really have to mess with that much thank god the yoke <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this picture board, everything, you know, I, like I said, I had to redo that, solder caps on that. But, I mean, all in all, it's it's done. And the whole importance of this project, too, was not only to have the monitor working so you could play the damn thing, but if you notice, we changed the glass, and what we wanted to do is, right now it currently has Money Storm, as you saw on the screen, but we, if you notice, it's a Suncoast glass now we put in there, you can change the glass out in these. And what I want to do is um, I have different Game King software like uh, like you do here, like you see the Kinos and all that. Well, I want to put a different version of software in here that's still in the casinos and basically to use use it as reference for percentages. And when we go to the casinos to kind of get an idea of what we're doing. So helps us uh, be more consistent with our money. So that's the whole purpose of the whole deal in the whole first place. But. I wanted to take the time to show you. I did get this back up and running, and I'm going to finish the video um, here in a minute, but I'm going to show you guys it back on again, okay? After I make some adjustments. The other thing I failed to mention, guys, um, is that, you know, this is a Saronix model 1793 I uh, worked on. That was what was in my machine. Now, I believe this one's probably like a 1493. There's different versions. Um, different model numbers. There's like quite a few more actually. There's like 20, 73. There's all kinds of them. And I mean, this thing's relatively, really old. It says on here it was built in uh, June 6 of 2001. So that's, you know, and I imagine the picture tube and the monitor itself is the original. So that's why it's not as sharp and as clear as the day off the showroom floor because I mean, like I said, it's 21 years old. So. Uh, or about, but uh, we'll be in June. But anyways, so we're going to put this back in and make sure it's good. So it's going through the load-up process, as you can see. This is a video test. Um, it's typical on these machines, and um, especially on this uh, model computer motherboard. So um, let's do the color test, purity tests, make sure it's groovy. Probably doesn't look as great um, through a camera and Again, it's old technology, CRT. You probably see a lot of lines or something. I don't know. But uh, we'll see if it comes up. And uh, we're going to then leave it running for probably most of the night. And uh, make sure it doesn't have any issues, like a power issue. Like some, What happened to me last night is I thought I had it right. And then as soon as I 
like close it up and just kind of let it go it started blinking and having some issues so and it ha you know it has to do with like that second knob is what they call like um they were saying it's like more of the intensity so you're throwing more I, I would imagine more power at it when you do that plus there's a gain control up on top of here um, all these monitors are a little different, not much, but they all have the same concept of a flyback transformer I showed you in adjusting it. But, uh, yeah, if you have the LCDs, um, they're the way to go. It's hard to find anything on this. Um, and so I really hope I helped you guys by doing this. Um, I hope somebody, and if somebody has questions, concerns, they need help, feel free to shoot me an email at uh, Wayno and Jojo forever. Um, you know, dot com or gmail.com and it's in our youtube uh, about so you can find it if i got it wrong but that way you guys can see what's up and uh, again so kino on nation uh happy gaming um i think what i'll do is this video isn't done yet i'm gonna edit all this together of course and if you've watched this you're a trooper uh, but what i'm gonna do is show you when i have the new um tray in with the Game King software and all set up, because I'm gonna again change to a different version of Game King software, and basically that motherboard down there with the lights will come out. There's an EEPROM behind there. I'm gonna actually pull it to put a different EEPROM in and put a different motherboard with the game chips on, and then reprogram to that EEPROM because that way I can basically put this game back in Money Storm with its original EEPROM without having to make any changes again, and then. And then if I want to pull the, you know, again, the Game King as well on the, that software, on the Game King software, when I pull it out with that EEPROM that I have programmed with it, it matches it. So I don't have to redo the machine every time. Um, uh, a gentleman was kind of giving me that tip, and I'm like, wow, that's a good idea. So if I get multiple games for this, then that's what I'll do. I'll have an EEPROM to every motherboard I have and stack them up. And just, I think what I'm going to do is just stack them up on top of the machine there and then in like a box and i know if i want to play a different one i'm ready to go you know put the little eprom in a static baggie or something so of course you gotta label it anyways guys thank you hey how's it going guys this is wayno um so this is a follow-up to the monitor project um as you see i got the game king software in now um and this whole project I started in October and it is now May. It's almost our anniversary again. We're going to be celebrating that real soon. Thank God for that woman. Um, but as you see right here, um, at the end of the day, I had to go to the LCD screen. And what happened was with the CRT, I kept adjusting it and adjusting it. And I basically threw too much power from the flyback to the picture tube that was old and I did blow the picture tube I believe and so at the end of the day I had to come up with another idea I, and what happened was I kept trying to fiddle with just getting it perfect right getting the visual to look good and I just couldn't do it I, I just kept messing with it too much I should have just left it as it is so I went to a LCD and what I did here though is um, I did it myself with a computer monitor I found at a thrift store and I basically converted everything. It was a long project and one day if I ever have to do it again, like say this CRT goes out here, that's an old CRT, I'll put an LCD in that one too. But I did here and you can see, I mean, I got it to the frame. Um, I had to buy a cable that basically connected um, to this monitor and then to the cabling to the j plug in the back there to be able to use this well the cable itself um was about 60 bucks as i found it through a guy in a slot um on a slot site I, I go through and um he was able to hook me up but um from Saronix itself they sell it for their monitors because they want to charge you 700 at least to put a new monitor in and um, this total was $15 at a thrift store and then that $60 uh, cable and of course a lot of work and know-how and then I actually took the touch screen off of the CRT and converted it to here and it works now at the end of the day is it perfect no 
but it's seven hundred dollars um, cheaper than I wanted to be and I still have the same frame bezel here but it works good and I'm just going to show you that it really is a, Do a Dell monitor that I tore apart so I'm going to show you that I'm going to go ahead and power it off down here and I'll power it back on Dell <laughs> so I'll close it back up That's going to power on and do its thing. Um, and again, so I had to reprogram it like I told you I was going to do um, before I added this clip. Um, that was a nice hit, by the way, in my spot keno, huh? I did that. Pretty happy about it. Um, but yeah, all the touch works. So I went ahead and like I said, I got the software put in here for this game king and then over on this one i even changed it out to a different type of game king software that we play and then of course you got jojo's got a different one and the normal slots well remember i said i was going to add trays up here well believe it or not this is the monsters inside this uh tray motherboard um and then i have money storm as well um and the glass and all that stuff so i could just keep switching these out um as I go and there's like I said like probably about a hundred different games for this type of cabinet machine and um, at the end of the day um, we're just gonna keep buying more there's like uh, Kenny Rogers um, the aliens like cops and donuts and there's so many games that I want to play and um, really cool but I got the monsters the other day and that's really cool on here um, and I made it so easy to wear Basically, like I was saying before, I take out the EE prompts that are programmed to this software, and then I put in another one with the tray, and it's already set up. Because I already once you set it up one time, it's stored on that little EE prompt chip on the uh, motherboard in the back, the real the back plane. But uh, there you go, guys. So yeah, I'm not perfect, um, and I'll show you <laughs> that I I still have all my stuff on the pool table but yeah i had to i just had to get inventive like and figure it out now if this crt touchscreen didn't work here um at the end of the day i would have found an, uh, another touchscreen that i could have added to this uh, lcd and it was 80 bucks to, and then you have to of course tape it in and still do everything but i thought well i'll just try the crt one since um i have to basically buy a whole new uh, picture tube or recharge try to recharge the picture tube on the old one if I ever want to put it back in here But the picture on the LCD is so much better But I'm bummed because at the end of the day I spent a lot of time on that CRT and then You know I screwed it up and I'm always going to be honest like if you know I do something wrong But let me go ahead. I'm going to pause this and I'm going to show you That I have that CRT still on the pool table So there you guys go don't mind the mess um <laughs> there it is without the touch screen on it as you see i had to take it off and that's a process you gotta be really careful i actually had to use dental floss to get between the touch screen and the uh, crt monitor and get that glue off if you mess that touch screen up you're like you're doomed or if you cut some wires so you gotta be really careful here's the here's the old old stuff i was working on it's all new but again at the end of the day that uh, picture tube back there shot um but I'll, I'll tink with it you know uh someday and uh, get it going um it's fun but at this point i just wanted to get that machine going because i really want to play it and jojo did too and um <laughs> money storm's actually in here or no the software i put back in here um i have to wait on a new tray um so i can just switch that game out too with the monsters and three well three games in but yeah so there you go um, anyways, guys, thank you. If you watch this video, I do hope it's helped. Um, I still work on a lot of these different things, all my slot parts. And one day I'm going to have to clean it all up. Um, I told Jojo I'd probably do that. So I better get on it. I've been doing watch repair lately too. Uh, all kinds of crazy stuff and cell phones and whatever I got to do to tinker with. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you um for watching please like and subscribe um even if you have some negative comments you want to tell me hey pound sand dude like whatever but at the end of the day the video was just to try to help you guys 
see that you can do stuff yourself and not get caught into paying eight hundred dollars and don't be afraid of messing stuff up because at the end of the day you're gonna have to pay eight hundred dollars uh anyways if you, if you have to go buy a new one so if you can save yourself money do it you know just don't blow yourself up so be careful with that i still have the the tool over there in that little tool deal that i made so all right guys um uh, thank you